Ladies and gentlemen, from the right. In the lead, General Motors built TBM Avenger, originally designed and built by Grumman. Following him, the legendary North American P-51 Mustang. Ah, what an airplane that is. Everybody and their mother knows about the P-51. The Grumman Avenger was one of our frontline torpedo bombers at the time. She was capable of carrying a 2,000 pound torpedo that was used during the Battle of Midway. However, during the Battle of Midway, many of these aircraft were shot down. The Japanese gunners were pretty good, not to mention the worst part about it was our torpedoes at the time of the Battle of Midway, which would have been June the 2nd, 1942, our torpedoes were pretty much garbage. They did not fire when they hit the ship and very often they missed their targets as well. We had all kinds of problems with those torpedoes. However, later in the war, we did fix them. And it became an effective weapon against Japanese ships and Japanese shipping. Gonna come around again from the right here. In the P-51, we have Matt Kropp, in the TVM, we have Nick Zeroli from the American Air Power Museum. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. It looks like they're going to set up for a photo pass. TVM in the lead, followed by the P-51. built by North American Aviation came about because the British wanted North American to build P-40 Warhawks. North American said, nah, I don't think so. We can build you a better airplane. They went from design to a prototype aircraft in 117 days, lacking only the engine to make the prototype pliable. The problem was, they put an Allison engine in it originally. Well, the British got the airplane. They loved the airframe. They hated the engine. In their opinion, the Allison V12 engine was a 12-cylinder mailbox. Fortunately for the British, Rolls-Royce was building this little engine, little known engine at the time called the Merlin. And some smart engineer over Britain said, you know what, what if we were to marry the Merlin engine to the P-51, what would we get? The answer, a legend was born. Here's the P-51. A legendary transport aircraft still in service today, almost a hundred years after she was designed and built. In the C-47, we have Dave Wigley and John Purdy at the controls. The story was, with the C-47, if you could fit it in the door, she would carry it. The P-51 gained fame for its long-range escort missions over Europe. Finally, we had an airplane when equipped with drop tanks could go the distance to Berlin and back and protect our fighters. And of course, you've all heard of the Tuskegee Airmen. They used the P-51 to great advantage 
From the right, here's the P-51. Also, coming around from the right, here's the Grumman, later General Motors built, TDM. R2600 radial engine up front, about 1400 horsepower. And here's the C47, complete with invasion strikes. The reason for the great success of the P-51 was its wing. Now, I'm not going to get into all the physics stuff about it, but it has a laminar flow wing, which several, many people said, oh, you can't build one of those on a production line. The tolerances are too tight. North American did it, but there was another problem. Production over in Rolls-Royce was already at maximum because they had airplanes that needed the Merlin too. So Packard stepped in. That's right, the legendary Packard Motor Car Company said, hey, we got this, we can build you engines. built over 80,000 Merlin engines. They went from plans to production in 18 months, including a brand new factory to build them. The C-47 was used for everything, from resupply missions to, believe it or not, a bomber. Recently, in Oshkosh, a very famous C-47 was found just a few years ago. She wasn't just a lead airplane on D-Day, she was the lead airplane on D-Day. She was called, that's all, brother. Here's the P-51, Max Prop, that's the control. A C-47 coming back on a resupply mission, spotted a German convoy. They landed, reported to the base operations, and said, we got a convoy, we got to knock out. Operations said, we've got nobody to take it on. So what did they do? They put a 500-pound pound bomb on a pallet, put it in the airplane, and successfully attacked the convoy. Here's the TBM. A very effective airplane when it came to taking out Japanese shipping. Originally designed by Grumman, Grumman pushed the airplane on to General Motors because they had other aircraft to build, including the famous F6F Hellcat, which turned the tide against the Japanese air power. C-47 coming around. The invasion stripes on this airplane are there for one reason, to let the friendlies know that that airplane is one of ours. So many things. So many things.